like we mentioned a lot of what work sampling is doing especially random is based on statistical sampling now when we take a statistical base what we say is if a representative sample is taken from a population it will have some or all characteristics of the group does this make sense okay now i'm going to go through and then come back here now to be representative formal sampling procedures had to be followed and when we go into formal sampling it is a lot to learn and a lot to do and it will be things like you have to specify sample size, sample time, areas, there is a lot of variables here which has to be addressed when we do formal sampling. Okay? But coming back to this concept of sampling, can you give any everyday use of sampling? Have you come across sampling in any, any context? Material testing. Hmm? Material testing. Materials testing is all sampling. When you do your concrete cubes, Okay, you are not testing the whole, uh, you know, kind of ready mix truck, right? You are only taking a few samples and testing. And what is the assumption then? The, the, the sample represents the Exactly. Whatever I test here, I will not take one, right? You will take some end samples. So, end samples that you take is representative of the population. And whatever results this gives is holds good for the whole. Time. Good. Any other example of sampling? Service. Surveys for entire country. We have nutrition or surveys. Ah, surveys sampling, correct. Okay, we like we will go. I mean, many things we do that we are sampling. When you do, even when you do a form and delay survey, we are only doing a sample. Okay, or you are doing. We get a lot of questionnaire surveys, social surveys. All are samples, correct? Okay, if you are if you are trying to estimate, uh, you know, some social cause, like you say, we do a survey. We don't survey the whole population, right? We survey only part and based on that we make conclusions for the whole population so that is also a way of sampling what about exit polls so I'm, I'm going to show you some examples here okay so for example exit polls how do they do exit polls what is the, what does that mean means selecting some people from Every area Correct. You do exit poll based on us. So you don't you don't uh, take opinion of all the people who voted, right? You take opinion of only selected. selected people. Okay, so that is also sampling. Are exit polls always right? When are they wrong? If the sample is not representative of the population, then the exit poll becomes incorrect. Okay, so here is a cartoon which says, okay, everyone has an opinion, everyone has a poll. If I take, if I take wrong sample size or wrong, you know, proportion of population or wrong uh, demography of, you know, then I will get uh, wrong results. So a lot of it. So when you do healthcare, you go for a medical checkup, you take a blood sample. Okay, what are the variables there? Or you take a COVID test. Okay, you might get it positive. There are there are a lot of variables. You know, you might not take it in the right time, or or let me put it the other way. They look at, uh, they go to a, a, a area and they take random samples of people to find the prevalence of the virus. Right? Yeah, zero surveys are taken. On what basis is a zero survey taken? It's a it's a it's a random sample and trying to indicate if what is the presence of the virus in the population. But again, it's a population which they are, we are making conclusions on, but sample which we are taking. Okay, so I guess all of you have understood that sampling is means you take only a selected part of the population. If the sample is wrong, you can't make any conclusions from it. If the sample is right with much less size of survey or evaluation, you get you can make conclusions for the whole population. Okay, now if you go back, so if you take sampling, there is like we are seeing here a what we call the statistical based sampling, which is the formal way the statisticians will do it. If you are doing a really good experiment, this is the way you are supposed to do it. If you are doing my exit polls, if I am doing a zero survey, if I am going to do, so the, the theory of work sampling says that we have to do proper statistical based sampling. 
Now, if I want to do proper statistical based sampling on a construction site, the variables are so high. Okay, it will take me time to design that and by the time I designed that statistical, statistical base, the uncertainties in construction might have changed my, my parameters. So, a lot of times, you know, we put, I mean, it, it is, it is while this is scientifically relevant, what we have found and what people have found a more heuristic base is okay for construction. Okay, that is one. Number two, we are not trying to get so much of accuracy out of our sampling in construction. Okay, we are look at this at the point here is we are using it as an intent as an indicator of waste. We are not trying to make any payment decisions based on work sampling. We are not trying to make any measurements based on work sampling. It is only an indicator of waste. So, a lot of times when I go to a construction manager or a project manager and says, what is the extent of waste on your site? They are not able to give me any figure. Okay, is it high? Is it 20, 30, 40 percent? Now, when we do a work sample, the project manager is able to see non value added is at this percentage. Now, that number itself is a is, is a formalization of what is either thing little, lot, more. So, that is the intent we are doing. Okay, so the reason we do not go in detail into statistical based sampling here is because of these factors and our usage does not require this. Our usage is only as an indicator of waste, it is not as a measurement. Okay. Now, like I said, there is a lot more theory on this. Those of you who are interested should read up the supplementary material. Now, when you go to the heuristic based approach, it is not that I just go and look and classify the way I want. Okay. You have to look at timing. Okay. I cannot, for example, I have to, if, if my work day is from say 8 to 6 pm, I cannot do my sampling only at 8 to 9 pm every day and say I am done. I have to be reasonably judicious in sampling around the, around the clock or I can even be selective. I can say my peak work occurs from, I do not know, 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock and I will take my best sample at the peak work and find what the extent of waste during my peak is. And if my extent of waste during my peak itself is high, then I should be concerned. Okay, so it, a lot of times you have to bake it on objectives, on the objective of what your survey of your survey is. I can say I am going to measure for peak work, but you should then be a sample based on that. I can say I am going to measure for the whole day, in which case you have to take more effort into spreading your sampling throughout the day. Okay, and, you know, and then you have to look at the routes. I cannot just sample the area close to the planning office or to the uh, uh, project office. I have to be know where the work is going on, make sure things are you know taken care. I, I visit all areas. If I am doing a tour based sample, I have to visit all the trades. Okay. I have to look at many other factors including the fact that sometimes you have multiple observers. Okay. And each observer should not categorize way the you know work in their own way. They should be a certain understanding a certain standard by which you are doing the work sampling. It should not be you do your way, I do my way and you put all the results together, it will be one mix up of results. Okay, so that is what we have. Uh, any questions on this? Okay, and ultimately what we are trying to get, like we said, is a percentage of all of this to identify waste. This is where we are headed. 